But it's not fire me. That's the name of the song. It's uh, Friday I'm in Love by The Cure. Again. That's what I was saying. It's not Friday. So. But either way, it's a good shot. It works. But it's Friday Junior. Yes. <laughs> good call. Good attitude. Good morning, everyone. Feel free to share your screens, show your faces. That's our assassin at meeting. I used to be a assassin. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday, September 14th. Uh, we'll go ahead and kick this meeting off and call it to order at 9.04. I think we lost Miss Kelly. Um, I call this meeting to order at 9.04. We will proceed with roll call with Mr. Secretary David Guerra. Good 
There it is. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. And let's get started. And of course, you know, it, it's the first go around and things happen. So one moment, let me set. Oh, hey, what happened to my list? Thanks. Sorry about that. There we go. Oh, my. There we go. All righty. Here we go. OK, so good morning. Uh, I will now begin roll call. Staff senators, please indicate your attendance by stating I in the Zoom chat. Oliver Lozano. Claudia Garcia. Cristina De Leon. Cristina Rodriguez. Dina Guerra. Thank you. Dina Lopez. Dina Lopez. Mireya Torres Avila. Jaime Miranda. Excellent, man. I'm just trying to make sure my audio is off. Jake Gonzalez. Thank you. James Martinez. James Martinez. Jeremy San Miguel. Um, Jose Amieva. You. Kayla Bunteo. Thank you. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. Kelly Quinn. Crystal Chapel. Special Collections. This is Gavin. Leslie Orozco. Maribel Mata Maribel Oops, oh sorry about that. Oh okay. Maribel Mata. Myra Garcia. Myra Garcia. Keep getting that little pop-up notice. All righty. Um, sorry about that. Melanie Garza. Thank you. Melba Cantu. Thank you. Monica Granado. Omar Netzelski, Jr. Rolando Segovia. Thank you. Travis Malcopine. Van Slusser. Thank you. Veronica Villarreal. Yesenia Carter. Madam President, 26 present, quorum is established. Thank you, um, David. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. We welcome our staff, uh, staff Senate general meeting for September 2023. This is our first meeting of the academic year, and I'm really excited to be here as your staff Senate president. Before we begin, um, I would like to go ahead and establish new business. Is there a motion on the floor for the approval of meeting minutes for February 2023 and July 2023? I move to table the meeting minutes for February and July 2023. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, please state aye in the Zoom chat. 
All those opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting minutes for February and July 2023 have been tabled. Before we begin the next part of our agenda, I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to our immediate past presidents, Ms. Yadira Mejia and Ms. Noelen Lazos, for their invaluable guidance and support during my transition into the role of staff Senate president. Their leadership and dedication have been instrumental in helping me navigate the complexities and responsibilities of this role. So I just wanna do a quick shout out for them. We do have a special guest joining us today. Um, Dr. Guy Bailey would like to address the staff um, and I will let him go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you so much. I know you have a busy meeting and I'm not gonna take but just a few minutes. Uh, the <clears throat> primary reason I am joining you today is to thank you for all of your hard work. And recently you've seen some stories about rankings, right? You, you, you saw the Washington Monthly Rankings, uh, which treat us very nicely, by the way. Those are rankings based on actual performance rather than things like status and and uh, how other presidents view you and so forth. But it's all actual performance. It's based on iPads data. So it's all of, there's no self-reported data. It's all objective data. And so uh, <clears throat> we're very pleased at that. And if you wonder why those rankings are so high, it's because of you. I mean, you've done a lot of really good work uh, over the past eight years, right? We, we opened our doors eight years ago. And, uh, and, and so that work is rewarded in that. And so uh, more than anything, I wanted to tell you, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna try to send all of you more information on that. Feel free to use it. Uh, you know, make sure kids that you know who are interested in going to college see it. Uh, what we offer uh, young people in the Rio Grande Valley is a great education at a great price. <clears throat> you know, you don't go into debt here. 86% 80, of our students pay no tuition or mandatory fees. 80% of our under, undergraduate students, 86%. I want you to think about that. that that's unheard of. And it's way more than anybody else in the uh, in the UT system. So if you if you think about what we've achieved, this is, you know, th this isn't a person, this is a university working together to achieve it. And so uh, just think about what this means for our future and uh, and for all of you. You're, you're, you're working at a great place. And so uh, we're going to try to reward everybody, too. And so as you know, I, I think we announced this, that we, we are looking at a 2% raise, and this will be uh, effective. You see it in the January 2nd paycheck. Uh, <clears throat> why did we have to wait till then to do it? Well, we did a 2% raise last year, and we did not hit our enrollment targets, and so we borrowed against our reserves <clears throat> to do that pay raise. Now, I thought it was important enough to continue the, the problem if you don't do pay raises every year and you don't sustain that you fall behind and you never catch up and so when we talked about it we thought it was important enough to do last year that we borrowed against our reserves we needed to wait this year to make sure we met all of our enrollment targets if you you can't regularly borrow you you, you understand your own personal finances you can't borrow against your reserves forever and so we did a good job. We, our enrollment's strong. Uh, and so you'll see that in your paycheck. And, uh, you know, we've tried over a period of time to do uh, merit, to do equity, to do, uh, you know, a variety of things to get our pay up. And, and then we're also raising our minimum wage as, as, as well. And I think you read about that too. And it's very important, uh, again, if you, if you think about what we try to do, we, we try to provide uh, competitive wages, but the best benefits in the Valley. And so, uh, and, and every, I hope you're always appreciative of those. My wife, by the way, is 
many of you know, I'm married to Val Amantia. And so uh, uh, I like to tell people Val is on my insurance <laughs> because UT, UT system insurance is the best you can get, right? It's, there, there is nothing better that I know of. And so uh, anyway, uh, it, it, we, one of the reasons we, when we went through the pandemic, we didn't lay anybody off. Uh, it, it's because we knew not only did they need the salary, but they needed the insurance and the benefits. And so uh, we, we hope we create competitive packages for people that help you live good lives. And uh, again, we appreciate very much uh, what you do for the institution uh, and for the Rio Grande Valley. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I, I have a few more minutes, and, and, and but I don't want to intrude on your time. But if you have questions, I'm happy to address them. Anyone? If this were faculty senate, I guarantee you they'd have questions. <laughs> so feel free to ask. I know you're talking. Dr. Zayas is talking to you later. He'll tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. I would like to just say thank you, Dr. Bailey, one, for being here um, and speaking to us directly. Um, so we appreciate your time. I, I am. It's, it is time well spent. Other questions, comments? President Bailey, will the... Um... State DEI uh, legislation affect equity pay in the future for UTRGV? It should not at all. It should. Uh, the DEI legislation will not have a big effect on us. Now, we, we certainly have some organizations. Uh, I mean, some, but there, you know, there are things that we can deal with. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, and here's the difference. A lot of the, D, the DEI philosophical framework and i'm not talking about and i, I think the legislature would tell you <clears throat> they want us to continue all our efforts at diversification they they, they ask me about that all the time <clears throat> and so why are they passing this dei legislation well it's D, the dei that they're thinking about is a philosophical framework that primarily is used by exclusive institutions to help deal with their exclusivity now we tried to we've tried to be inclusive from the very beginning we've tried to our, our very foundation is our inclusivity right and so that puts us in a little bit different position than ut austin or ut dallas or or a m because we're based on inclusivity and not exclusivity so uh, and, and and actually that's what our washington monthly rankings and demonstrate in part. Remember, one of the big components in that is the performance of your Pell Grant students. Our Pell Grant students <clears throat> perform it. I mean, uh, we have the second best performance of Pell Grant students in the United States. That's everybody. That includes Harvard and Yale and everybody else. And uh, and so <clears throat> we we have that because our foundation is inclusivity and not exclusivity. So the DEI stuff, I mean, there are some adjustments we have to make, yes, but does it change fundamentally what we do? It does not, and, and should not have, you shouldn't really see much of an impact. Same thing is re really true for the tenure legislation. I don't think faculty will really see very much of an impact there at all, so. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? I Hi, I have a question. Sure. Hi, uh, Suzanne Gonzalez from the Career Center. Uh -huh. um, kind of piggybacking off of what you were saying about the DEI um, initiative and all that. Are we still able to teach about diversity, equity, and inclusion oh, yeah. in our workshops? It has, it has nothing to do with what happens in the classroom or in your research. <clears throat> and so this legislation is really about oh, hiring practices. <clears throat> and, and what drove this uh, at certain universities, in fact, Texas Tech was one, there were, there were in their job ads, they required, uh, and not all of them, but in, in certain job ads, they required people to submit a philosophical DEI statement. And so 
Anybody. The legislature became like, kind of like making it. Yeah, and and so the DEI philosophical statement was one of the things that the legislature was opposed as a requirement for hiring. Also, they wanted uh, what, what they considered non-discriminatory hiring, hiring that was race, gender, uh, whatever, neutral. What, what we try to do is a little bit different. We look, and, and I'm talking primarily at the vice presidential level, because those are the people I, <laughs> I'm mostly responsible for hiring. We look for people who are, who fit with our community or committed to our communities and are willing to be parts of our communities. That self-selects. I mean, if you, if you think about this, <clears throat> do you want to, I have a lot of people who tell me, yeah, I want to, I want to be part of UTRGB. Can I work remotely from Austin and do that? No, you can't. Part of being part of UTRGB is being part of the community. And if you don't feel that you can be part of the community, then, then you really can't work here. That's that's what we're all about, is strengthening our communities. And so to some extent, if you focus on trying to strengthen your community and have people who are, want to be part of a community, you'll self-select, you'll get... Uh, uh, and so we, we've been able to do that in our hiring and... Uh, and we've maintained good, diverse hiring across the board, uh, especially compared to other institutions, by simply focusing on uh, on having folks who want to be well integrated into our communities. So, Thank you so much for that. Um, so just to be clear, just to clarify, we can use DEI in our workshops for career. In your workshops? Well, before I, I'm not sure what you're doing in your workshops. Now I'm thinking, when you asked the question, you said in classrooms, and yeah, so, in classrooms for workshops and all that. Yeah. Now, and and depending on what you're doing in workshops and training, that may be a different matter. And so I would consult with Karen Adams on that, and and you probably ha ought to have Karen Adams come talk to you specifically about what you can do in job in training, employee training, and so forth. It may well affect that. If you're oh teaching, no, it's it's for the students. I'm sorry, it's for for the students. If you're doing a sociology class yeah. and and uh, and you talk about DEI stuff, that's just part of your instruction. And awesome. So, okay. Yeah, but but if you have questions about mm, is this covered or not covered, ask Karen because they're if you in HR. I don't know if Mike's on or not. I but, am. Oh yeah, Mike. It, it does. It will affect the training that you yes, do. It, it will. But it will not necessarily affect what happens in the classroom. So okay. there's a if there's a, there, and sometimes that distinction is not as clear as you might think. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask Karen. Thank and you so much for your time. Please also keep in mind that we are still getting direction from the UT system as well. So a lot of That's these right. details are being ironed out as we speak. And so there's more to come and we will uh, stay in communication with you about those uh, directives that we're given. So thank you so much for the question. That's right. There, In fact, almost every Monday morning, we have president's meetings at 7 a.m. And we talk about, I mean, the, and those are all still being the details, especially uh, uh, of, you know, how it's involved in training and, but, but it should not affect the classroom or research. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Other questions? Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I'm going to, uh, let you get back to your regular meeting. And I, I appreciate your letting me intrude like this. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much, Dr. Bailey, your presence and active participation. We look forward to continue meeting with you. Absolutely. I, I look forward to it as well. All right. So for moving on back to our agenda, um, our first guest speaker of today's meeting, he brings with him a wealth of experience and expertise gained from his distinguished tenure as the Dean of the Steve Hicks School of Social Work at the University of Texas at Austin. He is currently overseeing academic affairs with the focus of student success as our core priority. Under his leadership, academic affairs will continue striving to identify, recruit, and retain highly qualified, talented, 
and diverse faculty and staff members committed to the UTRGV's vision, mission, values, and strategic priorities. Let us welcome our new Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Luis Sayas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Veronica, for the introduction. Uh, and good morning to everyone. I hope you can hear me well. I was, uh, I was gonna be talking to you from my office this morning, but um, as I look over to my left, there's a gusher outside, one of my sprinkler heads. I don't know what happened, it's gushing, so I'm waiting for a plumber to get here. He won't fortunately be here while I speak to you. Anyway, so thank you very much for having me today. It's my first opportunity to be able to address this group. I've met some of you here and there, and forgive me if I see you on campus, we've talked before and I don't recognize you. Remember, there's only one of me and hundreds of you. And there's a lot of faces to, to uh, pull together. So I apologize uh, for that. But anyways, I wanna tell you how delighted I am to be at UTRGV. I can't think of a better place to be uh, at now at this point in my career. And you can see why uh, I would come to, to UTRGV with the likes of the leadership of uh, President ready? Bailey. Okay, so then we won't I'm sorry, is there? Oh, okay. Um, and so you can see that, you know, President Bailey is a leader, someone that uh, really inspires me and uh, is part of the reason I'm here. And um, as you heard, I'm, I'm, um, I come from Austin. I was only there for 10 years, 11 years as dean. Prior to that, I was in uh, St. Louis, Missouri for 10 years at Washington University in St. Louis. And before that, uh, a total of 34 years in New York City where I was at Columbia University, then uh, later at uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and then Fordham. And I give you that list because I came out of the private higher education sector. And I was at universities that talked a lot about community. And, uh, you know, the, the relationship between the university and community, uh, community and, and giving back and service but really none of them lived the, that talk. Uh, then I arrived at UT Austin and I saw the impact and the importance of public higher education and what a university, public university needs to do and, uh, and is doing well. And then I came to UTRGV and now I know what public higher education means uh, more so than ever before. And I'm proud to be part of it because I think we do know that the population that we serve the region that we serve is mighty and it's very important. And we've got a lot of just natural talent uh, and, and drive in our communities that we need uh, to work with uh, to, the, to the extent that we can. We educate our students to return to those. And of course, we wanna make it a place that everyone uh, is happy to be working at. And so that's part of what it, it is to, for me to be here at UTRGV and be in this part of the world. So I'm really delighted uh, to, to be here. And I want to state, state out front that, you know, we could not operate a university. No institution can operate with just leaders. We need staff. We need administration, people who actually operate the engines of the, of the institution. They're the ones that keep this ship kind of floating and moving. We might have ideas about this program or that program. Let's start this. But when it comes to execution, you are the experts on execution. And that's why I think, you know, you are the engine of the institution. Um, and so I'm very grateful uh, for all that you do. I've always been very grateful for staff. Um, my father, a long time ago, taught me to be respectful to everyone around me um, because they deserved the, my, my, the, they had dignity and respect that I should observe. And I have always lived by that, but no matter where you are, where you work, uh, your stature at the university. So I'm, um, I'm very proud uh, to be here, as, as President Bailey said. Uh, you know, we are a university and we need to work together and that's what I'd like to promote. Um, and back to the issue of UTRGV, also quoting President Bailey, he often says, you know, you could take a private university out of its city, whether it's uh, Emory in, in Atlanta or Washington University in St. Louis, out of St. Louis, and it'd still be the same university. But we could not take UTRGV out of the valley. It just would not be the same institution. Um, our identity is as much rooted in this uh, this region as any other. And I think we know we have a mission that's very special. Uh, and, and for that, I'm very proud to be here with you. The, I have several priorities 
actually many, but I'm not going to bore you with all of them. But I'd like to start out with, you know, the the sense of, uh, for, for our students, if we didn't have students, we wouldn't be here. If there weren't patients, doctors would not have hospitals, right? Um, we're here for them. And our, our job is to educate them, educate them as best we can, make sure that they have a, you know, a, 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 a smooth or as smooth as possible uh, experience during their years with us. Uh, that that makes them feel like they belong and we should serve them as 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 uh, as if they belong here, which they absolutely do. And we want to see those young people uh, flourish. Uh, there's an old proverb that says, you know, we may be planting the trees uh, under which we'll never enjoy shade. Someone else will uh, in the future. And I think we are planting those trees and we may not be here to to enjoy the shade that they give us. But those those young people are going to be uh our legacy in a sense. So I think it's really vital that we we focus on students. Um, I'd also like to make, uh, do my best, if you will, to make sure that UTRGV is the place you wanna come to work every morning. I'd like to have everybody feel that there's a spring in their step as they come on campus or to your, your offices or wherever you are, whether it's Brownsville, Edinburgh, Harlingen, anywhere that you are located, that you, that you wanna come here, that you wanna, be a part of us, that you know that we have a mission, that we're trying to live by our mission. Uh, and that is is vital is vital for us. I, I will support faculty, staff, and administration in, in achieving that. One of the things I'd like to do, particularly with, with staff, and, and I have a long history of this, is to try to develop our staff and create career pathways to the extent that we can. Uh, we know that uh, there are opportunities for you to get uh, uh, education and degrees while you're employees. I think you should take advantage of those uh, as much as you can. You will. You are the you are the future of this institution, and we have to think about the pipeline and the succession planning. Uh, none of us will be here, and I don't know in thirty years. Maybe some of you young ones will. Uh, and um, I think we need to be preparing the next set of leaders, administrators, and staff who will uh, run this great institution. The other the other issue, and you know, you've heard a lot about this, is the B three. Uh, uh, initiative that is the bilingual, biliberate, bicultural nature of this institution. I have never been in an institution where I feel as comfortable speaking Spanish in a meeting as English. Uh, in other institutions, you know, there was the the the, the rule, part because there no there were very few other Spanish speakers, but that we can actually behave in bilingual, bicultural, and biliberate ways that perhaps no other institution does or can. Um, and in which we are, for which we are given license to live that life, to live the life that uh, we know. Those of us, uh, whether we're bilingual speakers or Spanish dominant or English dominant, legacy Spanish speakers, it doesn't matter. The fact is that we can communicate in the language that best suits us at any given time. Of course, our records have to uh, 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 be reflected in English because there will be people outside of the institution reading them. But I think we know what we need, what we can do here, and so that's really important and i think the the region needs us and we can and we need the region and i think by having that uh that access through language and culture and literacy uh we can we can go far uh farther the other thing is you know we talk about b3 but there's really a b4 and that's the binational aspect of it right i have to tell you i've never lived near the border in my entire life though i've studied immigration and mental health impact on children who are migrating being held in detention separated things like that um, but I, but the life here is phenomenal. So I know it probably for you it's it's mundane, it's every day. But I'm seeing this essential, you know, kind of traffic, if you will, between the two countries, and I'm just fascinated. I'm just fascinated by the ease with which we we come and go, uh, and we refer to Mexico as if it was just another neighborhood, you know, in our community. I love that, uh, and I think that really has come to life as I've been here. And of course, you know, it took me a while. Uh, telling my kids and my wife, hey, look, look, there's plate from Mexico. And they're saying, dad, this is this is the way it is here. So, you know, wake up. So I'm getting used to that. But to me, it's a new thing. And, and, I, and, I, and I pointed out. Um, finally, I want to I want to end uh, before I, I, I have to take some questions is one of the things that's happened in this country, perhaps in the past 10 years, has been the growing incivility among people in organizations. Uh, I've seen it, uh, the entitlement, the people being rude to one another, uh, not behaving uh, as if we're neighbors and family and a community. And I would like to do the best I can to see what we can do to stamp that out. 
Um, the, the way we can do that is to call it out every time we can, every chance we can. And I think as, as a staff Senate, you have as much obligation to see that happen as, as I do. If you see it, name it, point it out, gather together uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, and that's, that's important. It could be anything from, from uh, crosswords to attitudes and things like that that we might find uh, 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 incompatible with the mission of our performance. So I hope that we can do that and, and in the process uh, maintain a high level of morale uh, at the university. So I'm happy to be here. I'll get to know you and I may even be able to greet you by name on campus. Um, but meanwhile, thank you very much for having me as your provost. Uh, I, as I tell my deans, I work for you. Um, they don't believe that. They think they work for me, but really I'm trying to advance their their causes, that their, their schools be the very best that they can be. And that's my job, to showcase my deans and to support them. Likewise, I feel the same way about my staff, our staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zayas. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open for questions. Is there any questions for Dr. Zayas? Well, let me, before you ask that first question, um, yes. I'm from Puerto Rico. How many Boricos do we have out there? <laughs> Just saying, you know, if anybody makes a mean afros con gandules, let me know. I will definitely buy. There you go. There Did is I... a food truck, by the way, because I'm a huge foodie. There is a, a food truck selling Puerto Rican uh, food in the Edinburgh near the Arts Annex. Yes, by on Klausner, right? <laughs> yes. yes, I've been there. Believe me, I've, uh, I spoke that out right away. Questions? Yes. Good morning, Dr. Sayas. My name is Graciela Abrego. And um, this question on the water, I, I work for facilities. So I'm worrying about that gasher that you're telling me. What is the building that you're looking at? Oh, no, I'm in my home. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I'm in my home. This is, yeah. Oh, if it was there, Jason Hartley and his group would take care of that. In my oh. home, I am oh. the facility director here at home. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just going to making sure that the plumber will get there. Okay, so I'm no. sorry. No, 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 but I'm glad you raised that because I want to tell you how appreciative we are of our folks in facilities. Um, you know, uh, sometimes things happen and we'd like them to get fixed right away. Sometimes it's beyond our control or the control of facilities, whether it's an elevator that's not working or problems that we've had in Brownsville with cooling and things like that. Um, and I know that Jason is doing his best to get things done. Uh, it's not always easy. There's everything from the local issues of one building to another and the people uh, there uh, right up to issues of, you know, supply chain and, and, and things that are needed, you know, little bitty mechanisms that determine whether a thing will work or not. And it might take uh, weeks before those arrive because of the situation. So um, I think we I'm learning to be more patient. Uh, as, as I told you, I'm a New Yorker. So, I you know, I see there's a New York minute. And it's very fast. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate what everybody does under the circumstances. Okay, thank you, sir. But there, there's to show you someone who's on the ball who asked about which building I'm in because she was going to call it in. Thank you so much. It's great. <laughs> Dr. Zayas, I have a question for you. I have the privilege of working high, Melba, over here. I don't know where on your screen you are. Okay, I don't either. Let me see. It's a lot, uh, a lot. Melba Law Two. Um, oh yes, I see. Oh yes, hi. Melba. I know Melba. Now I know I have a face to. Yeah, yeah. Student okay. rights and responsibilities. So I just wondered if you know we have this new generation of students coming in, and AI is taking over a lot of industries, and it's worked its way into academia too. And you know, for the first time, we just had the semester has just started, but our academic integrity cases are rolling in. <laughs> It's interesting. Some students are identifying Google as AI. Just call it. Yes, I used AI. I googled it. Can you just make some comment on where you where you see how we handle these these cases? We're really going to our office is going to have to work really in in close partnership with with all your folks and faculty. Can you can you give us some indication of where you see this going? Um, you know, uh, Melba, I don't want to be the old guy that says, "Oh, these new these new fangled things and these kids today," um, and what's the world coming to? I don't want to be that old man. Um, so I'm looking at it as, what are the opportunities? What are the possibilities for us? 
Um, it's better to look at that than to look at all the negative side. Not to say there isn't. We do know that um, uh, it can be it can be uh, used for for bad and it can be used for for good. And one of the things that we, we will have to work with our students is you know how they use AI and their interaction with the professor because not all professors will say no. They'll say let's use AI, but let's use it responsibly in a way that allows you to learn maximally. Great. That's what we need, uh, but also be able to catch when um, when AI is not helping them or when those who perhaps don't want to do the, the task fully uh, then engage with AI to you know, do the parts that they should be doing. That's, I think, we'll need to catch. And I, I do believe that there are people working in AI who will help us with that. Um, I, I know that the University of Texas Systems Office is deeply immersed in looking at this because it's not just us. I mean, it's around the, it's around the country. And we've all heard stories of how, you know, uh, 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 chat GPT has been doing things and how AI can construct a, even, even a court case, sometimes not even citing laws that don't even exist. So um, we do know that there are lots of great minds and, and uh and people of integrity looking at that. So, Melba, that's that's all I can I can say at this moment. Um, but I do think I'd like to see how we can use it to improve our world and our lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. We do have another question come in. Uh, they said, we've heard the SAV salary equity adjustments are being put on hold due to the upcoming merit cycle. Since equity adjustments are based on job duties and the years of service of the employee, why are we holding back these adjustments due to merit cycle, which should be completely separate? Oh, uh, you know that's that's more that's more of a question for President Bailey and uh, and and uh, Chief Financial Officer uh, Mueller. This that's I'm not sure, you know, so I can't answer that. I'd love to, but I think that's that's a question that President Bailey could probably uh, handle in a future meeting with you. Thank you for that, Dr. Zayas. Uh, Ms. Lisa Dimas? Yes, hi. Um, I'm Lisa. I, I am the Cleary Compliance Coordinator. Um, I report to our VP, Jason Hartley. And um, I just kind of wanted to introduce myself because I've always had a really good working relationship with, with our previous provost in academic affairs. Um, I'm always given and provided a contact there to... Um, uh, really kind of be connected with your office and and where our students are are um, taking classes and and you know where we're owning and controlling properties um, to be able to be in compliance with the Cleary Act. So I just wanted to say hello. Um, I hope at the other universities that you listed, um, Cleary Act was was uh, prevalent there, and and you know there's. There's some knowledge about about the the importance of the of the law, and so um, I am solely responsible for all the compliance for the Cleary Act. So um, nice to meet you, and Good I'm sure you. we'll be in contact. And, yes, and thank you for your service. Um, I do hope that uh, you can say in a few years, once I'm gone, that yeah, I worked with that provost, and it was good working with him. Let's 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 make sure we do that. The two key people at in my office will be David Granado, of course, my deputy. Perfect. And Monica Garcia Ramirez, my my uh, my associate, uh, executive associate, who are really great people and on the ball, and so um, they 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 are to me what you are to the university. They keep me my engine going in the right direction. Without them, I think I might be lost. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Zayas? Well, um, I have a question for you, uh, uh, Veronica. Do you meet in person ever? Um, that is something that I do want to do um, as a goal for staff senate this year. So this is the first one, the first uh, meeting uh, of the academic year. So we'll see what that looks like, and we'll be planning um, something soon in person. Very well. Well, I hope you'll invite me because I, I would like to be there in person. It's, it's always better to really get to know the people in the room and share the oxygen there with you, uh, whether it's Edinburgh or Brownsville, if you alternate meeting places, I, I get to Brownsville once a week. Um, so uh, I hope that I can get to know you, all of you in person. So thank you very much for having me. I'm off to my next meeting.
Thank you. Best. Thank you. Up next, we have the fitness and wellness coordinator from UREC. Uh, Ms. Uh, let's welcome Ms. Fabe Kennan to the staff senate meeting. Hi, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Faye Kennan, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about UREC and a, lot, a little bit about the um, events that are coming up. So let's start. So let's talk about our, um, our facilities. Students and members have access to both campuses. We have the Brownsville campus um, and we also have the Edinburgh campus. So as long as people come in with their ID, they would have a full access to the facility. You have to be a student or a UREC member. We also have Sabrina on um, in the meeting in case you guys have any membership questions for her. And here's the membership pricing. Um, there's different options for everyone. Uh, we have rates for faculty, staff, um, alumni. And if uh, you, you have different options, you can have a seven day punch card, you can uh, do monthly payments or you can do an annual payment. And I'll give you a minute to look at those options. So at our Edinburgh location, we do have a partnership with Activity Health. So if you are eligible through Prime or Silver Sneakers, you're able to bring that membership card to our facility and have uh, access for free. Prime is a program for 18 plus and Silver Sneakers is a 50 plus program. And you can always check the back of your insurance card and call your insurance carrier to see if you are, are eligible for any of these services. So our facilities, uh, we have a, a range of, of options. We have locker rooms, we have lounging areas, multi-purpose courts, indoor track. Uh, this is, the indoor track is fantastic. If you don't wanna be running outside in the, in the hot sun, you come in here, it's a lot of fun. We also offer a lot of programming. We have aquatics, competitive sports, outdoor adventures, and my jam is fitness. So I'll be going a little bit into detail with this. We do offer personal training and we have a variety of services. Uh, we have fitness assessments. We have um, three different personal training packages. They range from three sessions uh, all the way to 20 sessions, depending what your goal is. We also have group fitness classes. We have two studios upstairs at uh, University of Recreation in Edinburgh. Studio one is an option where you can come in in person and take the class, or uh, you can log in with your UTRGV credentials and uh, live stream the class from the comfort of your home through Zoom. Studio two would just be in person. And all this information is online, so feel free to, to visit our website. We are currently um, getting everything set up for our group fitness classes to start this fall in Harlingen. So we're going to have boot camp and we're going to have yoga. Uh, the dates are listed on, on here. And those are going to be held at the Harlingen Auditorium. And we're, we're really excited about this. We also offer fitness outreach services. So let's say you're uh, hosting a special event and you want to have um, a yoga instructor come in or a Zoom instructor come in, uh, you can definitely reach out, uh, visit our website and uh, put in a request for an instructor to come into your event. Or you can use our facility as well. Upcoming, we have our Summa Dance Party and Wellness Expo. You'll be hearing about this um, once October comes around. We're going to be offering this, um, this event at our all three campuses in Harlingen, October 17, Brownsville, October 18, and Edinburgh, October 19. It's a different time, so please make sure whichever uh, event you're attending that you check the time and location. 
and we will be um, having different um, different partners, um, campus partners, um, uh, disseminating information about the services um, that they offer. But this event is uh, focusing on uh, um, spreading awareness on breast cancer um, prevention. At the university, we also hire a, uh, a lot of student employees. So these are the areas where we hire. If you have uh, if you know students that might be interested in um, getting an on-campus job, these are the areas where we hire. And here's a short video. <laughs> Right. And as I mentioned earlier, you can visit our website to get all this good information. You can also follow us on our social media. And here's the information. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Does anybody have questions for Faye? You can also find my contact information right here. Um, you can email me, you can call me. Any questions? I have a quick question. This is Lisa again. Sure. Um, I'm just wondering, do you do you know if the rec is going to offer any like discounts for summer programs, like for summer camps for kids? Uh, we do have a, a summer camp program um, during the summer months for youth. I believe Annette might be on the line right now, so she can give you more information. But there usually is. It is my understanding there usually is a discount for. Um, university uh, staff and faculty like if you want to bring your child to the summer youth program right that's that's what I was asking yeah yes. I called the summer and I they didn't have um, I guess I got the wrong information but I'll I'll check with her and ask you said who was that so you can um, contact either um, for the summer youth program you can um, there are several people you can contact um, Ami is uh, one of the uh, persons and also Art Cabrera okay we still have a lot of time. I just I can send you the information. <laughs> to go. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll note it down and I'll send you the information. Sounds good. Thank you. Hi, Faye. Uh, really quick. This is Sabrina Martinez. I oversee uh, memberships and reservations at UREC. Um, as far as discounts for our summer program, so for both our summer youth camp and our learn to swim lessons, there is a discount. Uh, for those who are UREC members. So that would be faculty and staff that hold a UREC membership, whether that's a month membership or an annual membership. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. We do have a question. I'm sorry. Um, we do have a question that says, does the insurance cover any of the training programs? So the insurance, um, the ones that we uh, covered, Prime or Silver Sneakers, only covers your membership. It does not cover the personal training. Any other questions? For the youth summer camps, how young? And this is Crystal, sorry. Um, what's the uh, age, start age? <laughs> Crystal, um, 
Ami um, says six to 11 years old. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have another question. Um, are the online sessions for members only? So for our group fitness classes, um, the ones that I showed you earlier for Studio One, those are live streamed through Zoom. And as long as you have UTRGV credentials, you have access to that, whether you're faculty, staff, student. Another question came in, are the fees a flat rate or do they include taxes at the time of payment? Sabrina, would you like to answer that question? Uh, yes, um, there are taxes on top of that rate. Thank you. And then we have another question. Is Prime only in Edinburgh? That um, the partnership with TVT Health is only with your, our Edinburgh campus, yes. All righty, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, I will put my my email and uh, contact information on the chat. So feel free to reach out with any fitness questions or university recreation questions. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, Faye. Up next, we welcome the Executive Director of Auxiliary Business Services, the General Manager and the Director of Marketing, Mr. Roberto Cantu, Ms. Lu Mr. Luis Guzman, and Ms. Vianney Abrego. Good morning, everybody. Morning. We're super grateful that you all gave us an opportunity to be here to present to you all today. Um, services. I am. Um, I report to uh, Leti Benavides, who is the uh, associate vice president of Campus Auxiliary Services, and uh, she reports to Mr. Our executive uh, vice president of finance and business affairs, Mr. Michael Mueller. So we're very excited to be here today. We have uh, had uh, some great changes over the summer, um, and I'd like to go ahead and start our, our presentation. Um, we had a transition in our din dining services program over the summer, and we're, we're happy to welcome Chartwells uh, as our new food services operator for our UT RGB campuses and to better serve our students. Um, I'll go ahead and... See here. Okay, super. So our dining services transition uh, was uh, comprised of a competitive bid process that was managed through our UTRGB procurement office. Um, the previous operator had the contract for over twenty years, so um, we. Um, we had a very inclusive uh, bid process that uh, we had representation from many stakeholders from throughout campus. We had uh, stakeholders from Student Government Association, uh, Strategic Enrollment and Student Affairs, Campus Facilities Operations, Athletics, UMC, and of course, Campus Auxiliary Services. The uh, contract uh, that was awarded to Chartwells was for 10 years and uh, Chartwells, um, the previous operator, their operations ended on July 16th, and on July 17th, we had Chartwells come onto campus. It has been uh, quite a transition over a very short period of time. We had to have uh, new venues, new employees, new processes in place before August 28th. So it has it was uh, you know a challenge. It was uh, something that we saw as a great opportunity, and we knew um, uh, all of the different stakeholders knew that a well-designed food services program is extremely important for our students uh, to make sure that they belong, uh, that they feel like they belong on campus, to make sure that they're making those connections with other students and that they're connecting with the campus community. Uh, we're very much committed uh, 
to the university's goals of kind of creating a different type of campus environment. We want a more traditional campus where we have more students on campus that'll be able to, you know, grow. Uh, we've got a lot of also, um, you know, in supporting the university also has a lot of uh, employment opportunities for our students that will help them keep uh, stay on campus, not have to mess with their parking, um, and also um, that'll help them grow and achieve their academic goals and help them graduate on time. Um, so um, we have about 14 slides that we want to present. Um, Mr. Luis Guzman is our general manager. He oversees all dining services operations across our campuses. And uh, he's got extensive uh, experience in dining services and food services. And his last uh, job was with HEB. So he's a seasoned professional and uh, we're glad to have him a part of, uh, as part of our team. We've had uh, incredible also um, support from Chartwell's higher education uh, in going through this transition. So. Um, I would like to uh, move on to our next slide. And uh, Luis, are you on? Yes, sir, I am on. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Luis Guzman II. I'm very excited and happy to be here with you all with Chartwells as the general manager of UTRGB Dining Services. Uh, just to highlight one of our, our concepts, the Vaquero Dining Hall. Um, the Vaquero Dining Hall will be featuring Social House It'll be the social hub on campus. The social house menus will bring tre trending flavors, social media inspired dishes, new flavors and mashups. Uh, it'll be bright, airy and vibrant with pops of colors that'll complement the UTRGB orange. Uh, our new serving line and a 12 foot added salad bar that'll increase our healthy food options. These changes are coming in uh, winter of 2023. So look out for some new aesthetics for the dining hall, along with some new concepts that are gonna be inside internally. Currently, we have some new menu tablets called WAND. They display some nutritional information for our students and anyone who comes through our doors. And then something that we're very excited about, we're offering continuous service, which will maximize the flexibility to fit our student and employee schedule. So before the previous provider, there were gaps in between service. We, we no longer have that. We have full service, uh, continuous from 7.30 in the morning to, to 8 o'clock on, on, during the week, and then starting at 10.30 on the weekends through uh eight o'clock as well uh vna are you on our marketer yes here i am i am vna abrigo i am the marketing director for dining services and we're super excited to see what you guys are gonna um know and like learn today here we'll be talking about our markets we have them both at the edinburgh and the brownsville campus so the market's gonna offer a flexible retail space that creates a dynamic customer experiences with a blend of operational digital and physical elements so soon we'll be having the Just Bake kiosk. This kiosk will be offering a 24 seven hot food service where students are able to you know, go to one side of campus instead of having to travel all the way to the student union or to El Comodor. Here we'll be offering 24 seven baked food. A new concept we're excited about the student union uh, formerly known as Burger and the Spuds is called Revolution Noodle. Um, Revolution Noodle allow customers to customize made-to-order rice bowls using different proteins, produce, in addition to traditional and authentic Asian dishes. Something we're very excited about, it just shipped last week. It should be here hopefully by the end of next week. We're going to be uh, implementing a new Japanese noodle machine. We'll be making in-house ramen noodles on campus at the Student Union, and eventually we'll be making our own broth uh, made from scratch in-house as well. So really excited about this new concept. Definitely stop by and give it a try. Next, we have Tico, formerly known as Burgers and Spuds as well. Here, we're bringing UTRGV Anybird Campus a diverse menu of teas that quench a, a wide range of palates. So we offer our fresh teas, our milk teas, and as well as our blends. Inside the, the market store at the Student Union, we have uh, Vaquero Subs, formerly known as Sub Connection. At Vaquero Subs, customers can get one of our signature subs and customize their very own sandwich or wrap, or even try our very, very, very good chicken salad. So formerly known as Starbucks, we have Rio Bravo Cafe. This is here at the Edinburgh Student Union campus. Rio Bravo will be offering an enhanced coffee experience to the Student Union, bringing a selection of locally sourced pastries and desserts from local bakeries. 
Rio Bravo will also feature high quality locally roasted coffee paired with a sweet and savory menu of cafe favorites. Luis, uh, could, would you care to elaborate a little bit on um, what we're doing to source locally? Um, th I think yes. that's something important. Definitely. So uh, right now we partner with Las Moranitas Bakery here in Edinburgh. Uh, we have a su uh, sweet and savory pastry selection uh, that our guests can choose from. And then we we captured some data. We'll be minimizing that menu down and some of the menu items will be back as limited time offers. And we're currently in process of talking to the roast house in Brownsville uh, to source a locally roasted coffee bean. So that meeting's coming up soon with their general manager. So definitely excited to hopefully be able to bring that to our clients here. I mean, to our guests here at University of uh, Rio Grande Valley. So the, the community corner, uh, we believe that uh, local businesses within the Valley's vibrant dining scene should be deeply embedded in the culture at UTRGV. With the community corner, we'll bridge the community with UTRGV by introducing a culinary concept that rotates local restaurants. We have currently partnered with Pineapple Ninjas to serve delicious local favorites like chilaquiles for breakfast or fajita nachos for lunch. Uh, very excited. Those, those, those guys are doing a really great job. I definitely recommend their Texas-sized burrito. It's hearty portioned. Here we're talking about Heritage Coffee, also was formerly known as Jasmine's Cafe. At Heritage, guests will be able to enjoy coffee proudly roasted by local coffee roasters who believe UTRGV deserves rich in tradition and flavor. In addition to craft coffee and cold brew, Heritage will also be featuring a locally sourced pastries and desserts from local bakeries. Here we'll also be offering smoothies, which we just implemented, as well as breakfast sandwiches so you guys are able to enjoy by the library. Then. So Valley Harvest, uh, locally known, uh, formerly known as Sandela's. So Valley Harvest will be about celebrating the bounty of the valley and building menus that create a stage for local produce and growers to shine. Working closely with the Hub of Prosperity, the UTRGV Center for Sustainable Agriculture and Rural Advancement, and the UTRGV Agroecology Program, we want to bring a concept that truly blossoms from partnership and education around a sustainable food system. Valley Harvest will feature a fruteria and fresh juices. Uh, we're currently getting ready for the grand opening. Uh, the date will be soon will be announced and we'll hopefully kick it off with a farmer's market outside Valley Harvest. So Crave is a new addition that we'll be having in spring 2024. This is going to be at the School of Medicine. It's a new innovative concept that can deliver many cuisine options cooked souvet style to guests in four minutes or less. This is a perfect solution for busy faculty and staff as well as students. It is an inclusive partnership that Crave Kitchen offers diners the opportunity to select from various fast food casual concepts and covers multiple day parts on a tech savvy ordering kiosk. Brownsville, El Comador, uh, our absurd bird concept, formerly known as the grill. Uh, throwback chicken shack experience, absurd bird delivers big, bold flavors. Our chefs created absurd bird with a menu designed to satisfy your hunger from morning to evening. Each piece is hormone-free and antibiotic-free chicken, fried in trans-fat-free canola oil. Our chicken can be dipped in your choice of unique sauces, such as vaquero sauce. So La Mesa, formerly known as Subconnection, it invites students around the table to share conversations, enjoy delicious meals that remind them of home. La Mesa will bring a rotating menu, introducing different special entrees each meal period with authentic and diverse recipes. La Mesa will be the comfort food destination. So we're very, very excited with our UTRGV enhanced game day experience. Uh, we've upgraded our menu at our concession stands. We now have a self-serve kiosk for Grubhub. Um, this allows shorter waiting time for those who are attending the games. We are also featuring local brewers for, for five by five brewing Los Paqueros beer. And in the last two games, we've served over a thousand fans in each of the games of the volleyball season for 2023. Um, pretty soon we'll be kicking off a order from your seat option with Grubhub and th those details will be coming soon. Here Ar we have Arcadian. our Katie. I'm sorry, B, go ahead. Here we have our Katie services information. So our Katie director is Maxine. Her contact information is here. She's more than happy to help you guys with any of your events. We've recently hosted like our Vaquero Roundup, our picnic with the president that we had on Tuesday in Edinburgh. 
and we have today for Brownsville. Uh, all your payments can be made in Cater Tracks. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Elva or Maxine. So some additional dining features that we have is our, our mobile ordering. So for students who may be running late to class or they still want their morning coffee, it's not a problem. Uh, you'll be able to order your favorite beverages and meals straight from your phone. Just download the Grubhub app and skip the line at all your favorite campus dining locations. Uh, those should hopefully kick off this coming Monday is what we're shooting for this weekend. We have Grubhub installing all the tablets across campus this weekend. And something we're really excited about is our, our MassGen. This technology is an installation of frictionless self-checkout. The MassGen has been successfully installed here at Edinburgh and at uh, Brownsville campuses. We have replaced one existing Micros POS with a MassGen POS at the Edinburgh Student Union Market and Brownsville. The average checkout time is on 150 test transactions, it's just under 16 seconds. And the great thing about Mastion is as we continue to capture more data of our checkouts, we'll get down that checkout time to under 11 seconds per transaction. Very exciting. So here are just some QR codes so you guys can meet the whole director team. We have some QR codes also for our hours so you guys know what's open, what's closed, as well as our menus so you guys always know what we're serving at the dining hall. Instead of you know having to go inside and check, we have that QR code ready for you guys to use. So stay yes. connected with us. We can get social with our UTR UV dining. Um, stay in the know with all the things and follow us on social media. Uh, don't forget to tag us in your photos to be featured on our feeds throughout the semester. Also, we have text to chat. We're here for you anytime. Text to chat is our text messaging program that will allow you to privately message our dining team with questions, comments about your dining experience and get real time feedback. Try it today by texting 956-405-6414 for Edinburgh and 956-405-6436 for Brownsville. And we are here for you anytime. You can leave feedback, ideas or ask questions at www.dineoncampus.com backslash UTRGV. Could you elaborate, please, uh, Luis or V, on the like or don't like kiosks that you all have uh, placed uh, throughout Definitely. campus? So at, at both of our dining halls, we have <clears throat> uh, what's called Happy or Not. So Happy or Not is a, a large uh, tablet at the exits of our dining halls, and it allows us to capture real-time data for, for our guests who enter the dining hall as they leave. They either click on a happy face, on a face that's not so happy, a face that's kind of medium, a face that's kind of sad. So they're not happy. And then that data is sent out to us weekly, and it pinpoint and drills down down to the exact time. So we can literally find out where we might have dropped the ball or where business was really good. And that helps us hold us accountable. All those responses are recorded, sent out to graphs, and that is shared with the team by V weekly. So then we take that data and use it to enhance our operations by whether it's adding more staff, maybe change, uh, taking a look at the menus for that specific time period. All in all, it's pretty much to hold our team accountable to give you all the proper service and dining experiences that you all deserve. Super. I have a so, quick question. Is that allowed? Yes, please. Um, Luis and Vianney, I'm at the Harlingen campus. And what I can say That's is that it. this is a transit point for uh, undergrad students and even some professors. And uh, the, I know that the number of students who are catching the, the shuttle to Edinburgh or to Brownsville has increased. There's always a couple hundred students here. And I think a little kiosk, maybe twice a week um, with coffee or, you know, um, your new restaurant that replaced jazz something or other, jazz cafe or something would be um, really well responded. It would help your revenues and provide some much needed caffeine and something to grab and go for the students. Um, I think it'd be well, your, well worth your time to maybe look into that because there's hundreds of students who catch the bus here every day. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Actually, I'm on my, um, I'm headed to the presidential picnic in Brownsville as soon as this call is over and I'm on my way back. I got with Robert yesterday. I plan to stop by the campus, uh, do some little bit of research and uh, partner with the team here to see what we can do to, to get something out there for you all as soon as possible. Yeah, a better idea might be if, if you join us like at maybe 7.15 in the morning is when you see a huge amount yeah. of students waiting to catch that shuttle. But thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
Thank you very much for that. We we have seen a 37% increase in ridership from our students. Um, Hardingen is a huge park and ride population. Um, so, but the School of Podiatry is extremely important to us. We are aware of uh, accreditation that they're that that is uh, on the horizon for them. Um, and it's really important that we get a good mix of services for uh, the folks from the School of Podiatry and of course the residents that use that and uh, other School of Medicine employees that, that do occupy that space. So we appreciate that feedback. Thank you for that. Um, Robert, we have a couple of uh, questions. I'm not sure if there's more to the, to the presentation. Um, I think this was it. Okay. Thanks. Um, I just want to double check. Yeah, so, I appreciate uh, it. And the first question was with absurd, absurd bird now in Brownsville, does that mean no more burgers? No, we, we're still offering a, a burger menu at the absurd bird. It was actually added back. Uh, our burgers were added back last Friday. Last Friday. Great. Thank you. And then um, did the prices change for lunch? I'm not sure if that's just for all of the op dining options or um, specific um, dining. So sure I mean, with, with different menus, there there would be different pricing um, as far as um, increases. Um, we are extremely uh, sensitive to our students. We realize that a lot of our students, you know, are on financial aid. Uh, many of them may not have a lot of disposable income. So price point is something that's really important to us. That's something that we've discussed with Chartwells, something that is uh, definitely at the top of their mind or at the top of their list of important topics uh, when it comes to building menus, pricing them out, and, uh, you know, offering the best value for our students on campus. Thank you for that. Another question is, are there any dining reward programs for staff for students or even employee discounts? That's for Luis. So uh, I've been aware that there's a employee meal plan that's coming soon. It should be discounted. Uh, details are to come. Um, as we gather more information, we'll be sharing that with you all as soon as we have it. Definitely. And uh, our team uh, with Auxiliary Business Services has built, they've worked with our IT uh, to, to be able to offer um, meal plan purchases through um, uh, payroll deductions. So that's something, you know, sometimes a meal plan for the entire semester will be several hundred dollars. Well, we've, we've gone ahead and uh, worked with uh, different team members to be able to offer that uh, through payroll deduction. And that way it'll be able to, you know, kind of uh, spread out uh, the, the cost of that meal plan. Great. Thank you for that. Another question um, that came in is, will Brownsville campus have the salad bar and sub sandwiches as an option? So to my understanding, the Vaquero subs could be an option in the near future as early as 2024, 2025 school year. Uh, that is something we're, we're continuing to enhance our dining options in Brownsville as, as the semester goes on. Uh, but right now, that's what we're, that's all I was told when I first came on, uh, you know, seven weeks ago, that in within the next year or two, there would be a, a Vaquero sub at the Brownsville campus. So I would like to add to that is uh, definitely the dining program. Uh, we're going to be having changes and construction over the next two and a half to three years. So it is going to be a comprehensive program that we will be implementing for our students. Um, so there will be changes uh, throughout the, the Edinburgh, Harlingen and Brownsville campuses. Um, but it is a multi-year program. Uh, so, um, you know, we're looking for bigger and better uh, things for our students and, of course, for our staff and faculty. Another one, um, and this could be tying into that last question, are there V-card pay plans in the future or currently? I mean, uh, definitely if uh, individuals have the the get 
program. Um, if you go to my.utrgv.edu, you can go to the bottom and you'll see the get uh, button. You click on the get and you can manage your uh, V1 card account through there. You can purchase uh, V bucks or dining dollars. You can check your balances. You can also download your uh, 2D barcodes, so that way if you uh, you know need, need access control uh, or your building requires access control and you forgot your ID, you can download the app and use that to enter your building through your mobile phone. Some feedback that I received is um, some of the students are saying uh, prices are too high for them. The cheapest food on campus used to be $3, now shows at five. Um, I'm not sure if you're receiving that feedback on the on the tablets or if they could write in comments and um, another um, question that came in uh, is can you elaborate on the bake machine at the engineering building oh exciting I, I mean I think that one of the reasons that that um, Chartwells was selected as our partner uh, there were many reasons right and there was an evaluation matrix that each one of the committee members filled out was their use of technology and um, one of one of the pieces of technology that they're going to be employing is the uh, just bake machines. We're going to have one at uh, the Brownsville Music Building, um, and we're also going to have one at the Engineering Building uh, here in Edinburgh. And that it's, gosh, it's a large, huge oven is basically what it is. And um, so we we pre-stock uh, that with up to 150 different menu items, whether it be pizzas or cheeseburgers or lava cakes, uh, you know, for desserts. Um, so it's going to offer a lot of flexibility in the type of menu op option, uh, menu options that are going to be offered through there. And we're going to be tweaking, obviously looking to see what moves. And uh, I also want to mention that getting uh, feedback, um, the text to chat, the DOC feedback, um, all of those things, those platforms are designed to allow us to capture, you know, that student feedback. So that'll allow us the flexibility to go and like, say, for the Just Bake machine, tweak our menus, uh, change out the offerings. And also with our with our different venues throughout our campuses, whether it be Absurd Bird, uh, one of the things that we've appreciated from Chartwells has been also uh, their ability to change out menus uh, pretty quickly, uh, being flexible, we think, and nimble is extremely important. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we are um, satisfying our students. I mean, that's our, our goal here. If it wasn't for our students, our jobs, I mean, we wouldn't exist on campus, right? We wouldn't have jobs. So uh, it's really important that we do receive that feedback. And um, all of the feedback that we receive uh, within 24 hours, uh, Luis, or, you know, we help support providing um, responses to any feedback that we do receive from our students or employees. Thank you. Another question is, how accommodating would the menu be for catering services to meet the department needs when it comes to catered events? So... Maxine and her team have, have done a great job of accommodating people with special requests in our, you know, nine weeks on campus. Um, any questions or concerns about any type of event, uh, feel free to, to reach out to myself or Maxine, and we can definitely work with you in the department to, to make sure your dining experience for that catering event is, you know, up to your standards. Thank you, Luis. Is there a way to get gift cards to people such as staff, students, et cetera? Yes, there is. Um, we could do it through the V1 card office, uh, Mr. Homer Villalobos, uh, Ms. Melissa Ramirez. Um, there are team members, part of the auxiliary business services. We'd be more than happy to issue out uh, gift cards to individuals or to departments that want to give them out to individuals. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, earlier during the presentation was we had to turn things around on campus. Uh, not all of our venues are fully uh, built out yet. We still have a lot of work to do, but we did have to create a very quick turnaround um, and during during this transition, um, we would not have been able to do it without the folks 
um, at our facilities, um, whether it be the electricians, the plumbers, our comp our carpenters, our general services, um, all of those people. Um, oh, I can't forget networking either because they've done an incredible job also to help us make sure that we have all of the registers, all of the credit card machines and everything ready. Um, these individuals, if we didn't have you know, their support, None of this would have been um, none of this would have been able uh, to be accomplished in the really short a time span that we had. So I, we want to make sure that we acknowledge these individuals. Um, they've been super, and we're grateful for their work. Thank you. Um, another question is: um, Will the Brownsville campus have additional food options in the future? The custom. Custom ramen sounds awesome and would be something our students would enjoy. Again, just to kind of echo what Robert said earlier, there, there, there's options that are coming within the next two to three years. There's construction that needs to be done, even as early as this winter break. Uh, so we'll be definitely looking forward to enhancing the dining experience for the students, faculty, and staff at the Brownsville campus. Okay, great, great. Let's see. Um, I think that's pretty much all the uh, questions we have. Um, there is comments um, about the event lines being too long, just to impede, I guess, access to some of the uh, uh, like food vendors. Um, I know that the picnic with the president was yesterday at the Edinburgh campus and today it's going to be at the Brownsville campus. Is there any way that that can be managed so that way students that are not necessarily attending the picnic with the president um, be serviced at the dining options? Just depending mm -hmm. on where they're at. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Robert. I'm sorry. I, I, it sounds like traffic, you know, management, I don't know, um, stanchions or I don't know how, you know, how to handle that. Um, I mean, I, I think you served over 1,500 people uh, at the picnic for the president on Tuesday. And sometimes, you know, our facilities uh, can't accommodate that many people. Um, so, I mean, we try our best to try and, and handle that traffic uh, to make sure that we're serving everybody, um, you know, that who's not going to be in line for the picnic with the president, you know, to be able to access, you know, any of the other venues that we have on campus. All right. Well, thank you for that. Is there any other questions? Hi, can y'all hear me? This is Edna Zambrano from the student union. Yes, Ms. Hi, Edna. Edna, we can hear you. Hello, Edna. I just, I just wanted to uh, thank auxiliary services and commend Chartwell. Uh, we witnessed firsthand how quickly they had to turn around everything from POS, all of their technology and all of the equipment switch out. I mean, it was it happened very, very quickly, and I think it was very unprecedented. So I do want to thank them for that. And I also want to keep encouraging the staff, like they mentioned, they have all these applications to take this feedback and encourage students to do that as well. I have seen some comments on social media, which is students' favorite way of giving us feedback, but it would be you know, much more effective if they went on those apps. And that way it goes directly to Chartwell. They have a number of people that get them instantly, so they can redirect something very quickly versus you know, they put it on other platforms. The other thing, when you were talking about the Get app, Robert, uh, it is such a great app. If you're, if any of the staff have not downloaded it, I encourage you to do that. You can add your own dining dollars on there, so you put in your credit cards. The other feature that I like, because I had somebody, I heard somebody ask about uh, gift cards. You don't have to do that. You can actually gift people V Bucks from That's your own true. account. So Thank you, you just, I think you need, I think you need their ID number. So if you have a coworker or you know a staff member. Uh, that you want to reward or give them a, you know, a birthday gift instead of giving them a Starbucks gift card or something like that, you can give them V-Bucks uh, from your app. It's really, really easy to do it. I've done it at Christmas and it's been really nice and staff appreciate it because, you know, you always know you have it on your phone and if you want coffee or something, you can, you know, you have money 
loaded on there and it's you know it's a nice gift to have so i highly encourage everybody to download the app thank you thank you for the kind words edna edna for thank the you, save edna. we appreciate you <clears throat> can you repeat the name of the app i'm sorry get g-e-t g-e-t yes I don't know if Homer's on on the call now. He may Alrighty. not be. Here. Well, thank you so very much for taking the time to meet with us and meet with the staff. Um, if there's Super. no further questions, oh look, uh, Miss Ashley de la Garza um, put the link on the chat for those. Thank that you want so to much. Um, so we appreciate the invitation. Uh, we'd like an opportunity to, to speak to the Senate again in the future. Um, once, you know, maybe next semester uh, when we have, uh, you know, some some more news, some more updates. Uh, but we're very excited about our partnership and we're, we're really excited about, you know, what we're going to be able to do to the student experience for our students on campus. So we appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so very much. Um, continuing with our agenda, um, we will be moving over to the committee reports. I will hand it over to the communications committee chair, Mr. Jake Gonzalez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, can everyone hear me by any chance? Yes. Great. So for the communication committee report, I would just like to give the uh, senators just a quick little, or for the website revamp, we are in the process of, you know, updating the website with our uh, current staff senators for this year, um, as well as, you know, for photos. So for anybody that hasn't submitted a professional headshot of any sort, uh, just please do so. Uh, we've already updated uh, the ones that have submitted already. So if you haven't done so, just please at your earliest convenience so that way we can go ahead and upload that to the website. So any visitors that see or try to look up who their current senator is, at least your name is listed, but, you know, a picture would be nice as well. Um, and then, of course, with the website, we are, you know, researching and doing a little bit more, you know, research on how other universities have their staff senate uh, websites up. So we're trying to getting inspiration, you know, creating it our own and just a really good design. So that way, it's just a little bit more user friendly for our visitors that come and visit and just making it a little bit more um, with updated information. The other part is for, you know, for the communications committee, we're creating a marketing guide um, folder. So that way, whenever we have time to promote events or we have anything up, uh, upcoming, we have a marketing folder that, you know, is accessible through the committee. And the other part is social media. We're in the process of updating our social media accounts for Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn and everything like that. So right at the moment, we're just looking over and consolidating some accounts we that we really don't need at the moment or that we just haven't seen any, you know, much engagement in a while. So we're evaluating those tasks at the moment. And once we have done so, then we'll update the, the, the senators and let them know which current social media channels we have at the moment. And then, of course, we're creating a master calendar of events for promotions. So for the whole year. So for the moment, we're focusing right now on the fall. Once we complete those and we'll move forward to the spring, just so that way we have good understanding of how long you know what it will take to promote an event if it's happening in the spring so that way we have a good of engagement and a possible uh, increase of attendance for those events so that includes athletic events art events campus events everything you could think of that's university-wide we want to be able to promote those on our social media accounts and to communicate with our staff senate but of course with our campus community as well so everyone is informed properly on what events are coming up so that master calendar will be accessible through the communications committee as well as through the staff senate as well and um, that's what I have for the communications committee. Thank you. And I will turn it over now to Ms. Yesenia Carter from the Constitution and Elections Committee. Hi, thank you, Jake. Um, my name is Yesenia. Um, I am the chair of the Constitution and Elections Committee. Um, I would just like to introduce them. Um, we first have a Crystal Chapel, which is the co-chair, Melanie Garza, which is the Staff Senate historian, but she's also with us, Monica Granado, David Guerra, the Staff Senate Secretary, and Madam President, Veronica Villarreal. Um, a little summary of what our committee is, is directed to. The committee identifies issues or suggests 
thoughts uh, or suggestions regarding the constitution suitable for review. We gather and evaluate information and we recommend courses of action to the staff Senate. So this year uh, we wanna work on a new version of the constitution. We're gonna update the districts, uh, hopefully with the goal of uh, next spring. Uh, we are also going to provide a, a new updated staff Senate constitution viewable on the internet so or on the website. Uh, right now it's not updated, so we are working on that. Uh, we have a few meetings uh, scheduled so that we could get that up ASAP. Um, the last thing, we also manage the nominations and elections process of the staff Senate. So towards the end of the the uh, the year we'll start gathering all of that information with the team. I'm fairly new to the staff Senate. Um, this is my first time ever being a chair. Uh, I hope that if you all do have questions, you reach out to me. Um, I will get my questions answered through all of my experienced team members. So please uh, just bear with me. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to uh, pass it over. Up next will be Mr. Omar Nadzelski from Business Processes and Staff Support Committee. Thank you, Yesenia. Thank My you. name is uh, Omar Nadzelski. I'm the chair of the Business Processes and Staff Support Committee. Uh, my co-chairs are Kelly Quinn, Melba Cantu, and our members are Travis McAlpine, James Martinez, Jaime Miranda, Dr. Miraida Torres Avila, and Van Slusser. For our committee report, uh, there are three items that I just wanted to update everyone. Um, we went a committee name change. So the feedback committee has undergone a name change to better reflect its mission and purpose. Uh, it's now known as the Business Processes and Staff Support Committee. So this name change was made to align the committee more closely with its purpose of uh, business processes, clarification, addressing staff concerns and comments and advocating for the best practices. We also have a new vision statement. So our committee's uh, vision statement is the Business Processes and Staff Support Committee envisions a workplace where clarity, support, and continuous improvement are uh, the cornerstones of our institution's culture. We are committed to fostering an environment where our staff can thrive, ensuring that our business processes are efficient and effective while advocating for best practices across the organization. So this vision statement underscores our commitment to improving these processes and providing meaningful, meaningful support to staff, ultimately aiming to create a workplace that empowers all of our employees to grow. And our last item is uh, the QR code for staff feedback. So as part of our ongoing efforts to gather feedback from staff and suggestions, we have uh, continued to build on the previously implemented QR code. Staff members can simply uh, scan this QR code that is provided in the chat to share their feedback or propose any improvements to um, our existing business processes. So we encourage um, all of our staff to use this quick and accessible method to voice their opinions and uh, let us know of any ideas. And just wanna emphasize that your input is invaluable in helping us drive some of the changes here at the institution and better support you guys. Um, that's all that I have for the business um, processes and staff support committee. Next, Mr. Oliver Lozano from staff success committee will be presenting. Thank you, Omar, for that. Sorry. This is the first time as well. Um, I guess uh, my name is Oliver Lozano, uh, and we're walk working with the division and provost. And we have a great team on our side um, that's going to be helping you out for staff success, which our co-chairs, Ms. Leslie Olosco, we have Mr. Tim Odom as uh, as member, Ms. Claudia, Ms. Myra, Jeanette, Dina, Maribel, and Jose. And obviously, we want to make sure we have in our committee some great events for this semester. We're in the process of um, working to make sure we get this meet the senator. Meet, yeah, meet your senator for this semester to kick off very well, so you can meet your senators within your areas. Um, I'm hoping we could get that covered and taken care of very soon, so we can make sure you can see some faces and not just emails or just uh, names randomly. So uh, we'll be in contact very soon, and just be on the lookout. We're trying to work different things for the entire year. Uh, and we're going to be more than happy to get any feedback on what you like to do as far as staff success. 
And now I'll turn it over to Miss Kim, right? Kelly, I'm sorry. Sorry, Miss Kelly. I believe move forward to Miss Kelly or Miss Velenica. Hello, everyone. We will now open the floor for public comments and questions. And if you all saw in the chat, um, you could see the links to the Staff Senate website, our social media accounts, and the feedback form that um, Mr. Omar was talking about. Mr. Carlos Munoz just shared a link uh, to the events for theater. So the Haunting of Hell House is going to be available for um theater department i think i could be wrong no yeah you're right thank you so much <laughs> uh so we are really happy this was a sellout last year with frankenstein same director we had three sellouts in a row uh unheard of and unprecedented for theater so this would be a way for you to secure your ticket ahead of time and um also wanted to invite anybody who has children or grandchildren or is a child at heart we're doing a Super Mario Studio Ghibli concert, um, and it's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, and I'm going to share the trailer. We're going to you're going to see it on Facebook, but I figure I'd give you guys a first preview um, and free concert. If you have little ones that just want to get into piano or just love classical music um, or love video games, this is a great opportunity to expose them to uh, the arts, and they'll also. Uh, hear from Bach and Hayden or Haydn, but they'll also hear, um, you know, their favorite Mario songs. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Miss Crystal Chapel shared the second annual awareness walk flyer uh, for the RGB QR code flyer. And she also shared about suicide. So uh, September is Suicide Awareness Prevention Month. It's okay to not feel okay. So make sure you reach out um, to somebody if you're not feeling the best. Um, and it's about, the presentation is Ask About Suicide to Save a Life. Madam President, if you don't mind. Um, yes. Everyone who is sharing, uh, Great uh, ideas and activities are coming uh, through UTRGV. Uh, I do recommend to reach out to our communication committee so they can make sure that they post that on our social media um, so that information can go out to all our staff members. Um, thank you for all the, the, the events that are coming up um, and we'll be happy to share that on our social media as well. Um, please feel free to email it at uh, staffsenate at utrgv.edu. And we'll make sure that uh, it gets posted on our social media. Ms. Eliza Gomez, I see that you have an event to announce. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm Eliza Gomez with the Office of Emergency Management. And I just wanted to make a reminder, uh, shout out to everyone about the, the brand new initiative that we are launching for the institution called Ready UTRGV. Uh, you've seen it in your announcements. Uh, you've probably seen it on Messenger, and it's also on the My UTRGV uh, homepage is one of the sliders. If you click on it, it gives you event information. It is basically September is National Preparedness Month, and we're partnering with Office of Student Rights and Disabilities. Uh, I'm sorry, Student Rights and Accessibility, rather, pardon me, and uh, for National Safety Month. And so we are having an event on Monday the 18th in Edinburgh from 10 a.m. to noon at the ballroom. And we're gonna be having our community partners and also our, our institutional partners represented there. And the first 100 uh, visitors will get a, a goodie bag. And we're also having on that same event gonna be taking place on Friday September 22nd in Brownsville at El Gran Salon on um, from 10 a.m. till noon. And 
we encourage everybody and we're really excited because this is also the first time that our incident management team that we're able to offer an, an in-house training uh, that has never been brought to the institution before, uh, crisis management and higher education. It's a three-day training um, brought to us by some very seasoned experts from TEKS. And so we're very pleased. It's going to be a new initiative. And on an ongoing basis, there's going to be different topics. We've worked very exclusively. And I'm very grateful to Marketing and Communications uh, for helping us develop the brand and develop, develop content and templates and so forth. And so it's a very exciting opportunity. But basically, the, the whole purpose of the initiative of Ready UTRGV is to spread awareness and spread information and resources to, to promote the message that it does take a village, the preparedness starts at home, it starts with you, and little things that you can do each and every day on a small scale to be prepared for any type of disaster so that you're not so scared about a disaster, that you're ready for it. Um, we have had extreme heat, we've had a very crazy tropical season um, we've had winter storms that we've faced in the past. Wildfires are still impacting our state. Um, and, and flooding is always an issue with uh, the lack of infrastructure in a lot of areas here in the valley. So uh, very little rainfall can create a very big problem quickly. So, you know, these are all things that we work with each and every day. And also FEMA is promoting for its theme this, this year for um, National Preparedness Month, preparedness for older adults for people who are more vulnerable, make, uh, people who have um, special needs in a variety of different ways, uh, different ways of communicating, different ways of processing. Um, they're medically compromised. Uh, there's different ways that they need to be mindful and cognizant of to prepare so that if they need to leave or make a, alternate arrangements, they can quickly do so in a, in a safe manner and that they have everything that they need to survive the disaster and to continue to thrive. So um, that's all I have. I thank you very much for your time. And I, you, I hope to see everybody out there. It's, it's really exciting. And uh, this is also gonna be happening again in the spring and we're gonna be bringing it to the Harlingen campus as well. And then going forward um, every fall and every spring, this is gonna be an annual event. So we're really excited about it. It's taken a lot of work, a lot of time. And it's something I felt really strongly about. And I think it just, it helps the entire UTRGV community be stronger and more resilient. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza, for sharing that. Um, Staff Senator Jose Amieva shared the calendar event for those that want to just have a direct link to it. If there aren't any further public comments or questions, we will now move to make a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the staff senate general meeting for the month of September. Is there a second? I second. Is there any debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? All those in favor, please state aye in the Zoom chat. All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. We will adjourn the meeting at 1047. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. You have a wonderful Thursday, and we'll see you guys next month. Bye. Thank you, everybody.